Hi, welcome to the Yale University Art Gallery in New Haven, Connecticut. Come on in and have a seat. This is Stories in Art. Please feel free to pause the video whenever you'd like to get a closer look at the artwork. Enjoy! Hi, my name is Charlotte and I'm a gallery teacher at the Yale University Art Gallery. The story I'm telling today is adapted from William Shakespeare's play, Twelfth Night. It's a funny story with a lot of plot twists about mistaken identity and love. As I tell the story, we will be looking at some art from the gallery that was made by the artist Edwin Austin Abbey to be illustrations for the play. This first image is a pen and ink drawing. It shows a duke, one of the characters from the story. Take a close look. What do you notice? I see a man lying on a couch with his hand on his head. I wonder what he's feeling and what he is thinking about. This is another drawing from the story. What do you notice? I see two people having a conversation. I wonder what they are saying. As I tell the story, keep looking to see what else you notice. Long ago, there were two twins, a sister named Viola and a brother named Sebastian. They were best friends, looked very much alike, and did everything together. One day, they were taking a voyage on a large ship when a bad storm came and destroyed the ship. After swimming and floating in the water for a very long time, Viola awoke alone on the shore with her brother nowhere to be found. She was very sad and missed her brother and worried she would never see him again. Viola realized that she must find work so that she could buy food and have a place to live. She decided to disguise herself as a boy, thinking she might have better luck finding work that way. Looking at her reflection, she realized that she looked just like her brother. While she was walking, she met some local fisher folk and she asked them, what kingdom is this? They told her that she was in Illyria and that Duke Orsino, who ruled the kingdom, might give her a job. She made her way to Duke Orsino's castle, still dressed as a boy. When she arrived, she introduced herself in a low voice, saying that her name was Cesario. Duke Orsino was in need of help. He offered Viola, still disguised as Cesario, a job and showed her around the palace. The Duke explained that he was so madly in love with the Lady Olivia, who lived nearby, that he could hardly get off of his couch. The Duke said, Cesario, will you be my messenger? Maybe you can convince Lady Olivia to see me and become my wife. Viola, dressed as Cesario, replied, Duke, I will try but I do not know this Lady Olivia. Would it not be best for you to go yourself and try to win her love? The Duke then gave Viola the full history. He had decided that he loved Lady Olivia, but Lady Olivia was mourning the loss of her brother and said that she would not allow any visitors in her house for seven years. Instead, she would stay in her house and her yard and she would wear a veil and not make any new friends. Viola, still dressed as Cesario, agreed to work for the Duke and rode to Lady Olivia's home. Lady Olivia was sitting in a beautiful big ball gown with puffy sleeves and a long veil. Viola began to recite the Duke's speech. Lady Olivia listened and then interrupted saying, stop good Cesario, I do not love the Duke and I never will. Viola stood, trying to think of something to say that could help Lady Olivia see what a good person the Duke was. The more time Viola spent with the Duke, the more she thought he was the best person she had ever met, other than her brother, and she couldn't imagine why Lady Olivia would not want to meet him. Please, asked Viola, won't you reconsider? The Duke is so good and kind. He takes good care of his people and he loves you very much. Maybe if you just spent some more time with him like I have, you would see all the good in him. Lady Olivia replied, I can never love the Duke. 
he needs to stop sending me messages and forget me. He will find happiness with somebody else. Realizing that she really liked Cesario's company, she said, however, if you want to come again, you may. This puzzled Viola, that Lady Olivia would wish to see her, but not the Duke. As she rode back to the Duke's castle, Viola realized that she was starting to fall in love with the Duke. She worried that because she was pretending to be Cesario, the Duke didn't really know who she was. It felt so complicated, and she wished she could tell him the truth. Meanwhile, traveling across the countryside was none other than her brother Sebastian. He had also survived the shipwreck, but he had washed up on a different shore. After traveling for a number of days, he found himself in the kingdom of Illyria near Lady Olivia's house. Cesario, Lady Olivia exclaimed when she saw Sebastian, I'm happy to see you again after such a short time. Sebastian was confused because he had never heard of anyone named Cesario. He was pleased that Lady Olivia seemed to like him so much, so he went along with it. As they talked, Sebastian found that he liked Lady Olivia. She had no idea that Sebastian was not Cesario and was delighted that he was not trying to convince her to marry the Duke. Lady Olivia had an idea. Cesario, she said, this might seem hasty, but I'm so fond of you. Would you marry me? Sebastian was surprised, but happy and said, of course. I'm already in love with you after such a short time, and I can't wait to spend our lives together. Over the next few days, the twins never crossed paths, even though they were both in Illyria. After a while, Sebastian and Lady Olivia got married. Meanwhile, the Duke and Viola, not knowing of this marriage, decided to visit Lady Olivia, hoping that she would finally accept the Duke's proposal. When they arrived, they found her in the garden alone. Lady Olivia was startled by Cesario's sudden appearance. She said, Husband, why are you with the Duke when I thought you were inside? Viola was confused and the Duke was starting to get angry. He yelled at Viola, What is the meaning of this? Why is Lady Olivia calling you her husband? Before Viola could answer, Sebastian emerged from the house. Everyone looked around in confusion. Lady Olivia exclaimed, Most wonderful! There are two Cesarios! The two Cesarios, Viola and Sebastian, looked at each other. As they walked towards each other, Viola exclaimed, Are you my brother, Sebastian? I'm Viola. Yes, I am your brother, Sebastian replied. I thought I'd never see you again. The twins hugged, happy to be reunited. Lady Olivia realized that she was, in fact, married to Sebastian. The Duke realized that his faithful assistant and good friend Cesario was actually Viola. Once the confusion and the excitement settled down, Lady Olivia and Sebastian agreed they loved each other and remained happily married. The Duke realized that his crush on Olivia wasn't real and that he had actually been falling in love with Viola. He asked Viola if she would marry him, and when she said yes, everyone was happy. The end. In our telling of the story, we only shared pictures of some of the characters and their interactions. We left out the final scene so that you could use your imagination. Using paper and pencil, try drawing what happens when all the characters get together for the Duke and Viola's wedding. We hope you have fun. Thank you for joining us for Stories in Art at the Yale University Art Gallery. We hope you enjoyed listening and looking with our storyteller.